Did everybody have a chance to read the minutes from April 5th? Yeah, but now I'm, I'm not on with you guys. We can hear you, Betty. Yeah, but I can't see anybody, so. <laughs> We're seeing you. Well, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Huh. I see numbers on my screen. That's about all. Hmm. So I'm going to play. I don't know what I did so that I can't see you. I wonder if the window is like some other windows now in front of it and it's one of the windows behind. Um. No, I post, uh, let's see. I don't know what happened, but you hear me, so you don't need to see me. I mean, I don't have to see you. You see me, I guess, that's all. <laughs> Uh-oh, we lost Brian there. Um, <laughs> I don't know. That's all, I am the host now. So um, I, I, th I think we'll probably no, get it back. Betty, you're on your iPad. Yeah, I, I'm on my iPad now. Okay. Oh, I'd say turn off one of those two then. Maybe I sh I'm going to shut this off. Okay. Okay. I All right, I think we're all ready to go then. My connection's not great, apparently. So, Joyce, okay. you're still co-host, right? Yeah, I think I'm still on there as co-host, yep. Okay. All right, then if um, everybody had a chance to read the minutes, I'll accept the motion. Uh, I move that we accept the minutes from the previous meeting. I second. Second. Oh. Doesn't matter. No. Okay, I'll do a roll call vote. Susan? Yes. Betty? Yes. Joyce? Yes. And I'll abstain since that was involving me. So that carries anyways. Um, the next item is to review and discuss the job description for the new position. And Brian had sent out a preliminary job description and I guess we'll open the floor at this point in time. Sure. Um, I'll, how about I give a little background on, on what we're trying to do, and then um, we can uh, get into the weeds a little bit on the job description if we want. Um, so this came about last, uh, really, it was really last winter, um, and we were having conversations about, uh, about workload and about what's getting done and what's not getting done. And um, it, it, it just really, I guess, hit home to me that um, there was, there's a lot of work and we're having trouble getting volunteers um, and the volunteers that we are getting um, are busy, just like all of us. Um, and I don't mean this as a, as a, as something that's that's a poor reflection on anybody. I, I can't volunteer in my time very much. Um, but there's just a lot of work that's either getting pushed off, it's not getting probably done as quick as it should, um, or it's not getting done at all. And a lot of that was happening um, really, I think, at really at the boards and committees level. Um, so there's I'll just, I'll pick on the housing committee, for instance. Um, housing committee is all volunteers. There's $120,000, $140,000 in CPA funds that's in the housing trust. Um, and we're, there's just no movement on it. Um, again, they're all volunteers. It's a complex issue to try to, to try to either institute some type of housing program. Their goal was to do some type of brick and mortar project and the time and the resources from a volunteer committee just aren't there. Um, so they really need staff help. Um, another area where I think the boards need help are, are the, the land use boards pretty much. Uh, planning board and zoning board. Um, it's, they're chronically late on their decisions, on their meeting minutes. Um, I think they're overwhelmed because we've had a, a pretty big increase in number of permits and approvals that are being sought. A lot of it's being generated from the legalization of marijuana, um, but they just need help. Um, 
and we always need I, my opinion is that we always need to be you know looking at our zoning bylaws and changing it and adapting them to what's happening in society um so there's a need there i'm also a big believer that we need to plan for the future um so one of the things that that struck me um last winter as well was a lot of the a lot of the the things that have driven new growth in town so probably for the past i don't know seven eight years there's always been pine plains estates there's always been new buildings um there's always been lots on uh dickinson hill road and a lot of that new construction has has driven a lot of the the economic growth um the industrial park is full except for one lot that's owned by Cavestro. Um, so, um, and just the general sense that things are changing. Um, there's a lot of change happening around um, exit 24, well, exit 35 now. Um, so yeah, it's just important for us to, important for the town to, to keep an eye on, on what's next because um, that helps us spread the cost of the services out over a wider, uh, a larger number of, of taxpayers. What I, I like to call them unique taxpayers, right? We want we want to share the cost with additional people. Um, mm -hmm. And then the other part was on top of the the day to day stuff, uh, the day to day work. Um, there were more and more grant opportunities becoming available, and. In order to do that, it, it takes a significant amount of work to get grant applications in. And then if you're lucky enough to, to be awarded, then you have to do the work. You have to do the project um, and the reporting that comes along with it, reimbursement requests, all those types of things. So, you know, for the past couple of years, the town's done a really good job of getting, of making itself more eligible for grants. Uh, the hazard mitigation plan was completed. The MVP plan was completed. The open space and recreation plan was completed. And those are all prerequisites to applying for different pots of money. Um, so there's going to be a lot more opportunities. Uh, there has been recently, um, since the start of the pandemic, there's a lot of money out there um, that's going to be available, especially if the infrastructure bill passes. And even with... Um, the uh, CLFRF, that's the ARPA funding that's going to be flowing into the towns. Uh, a, a good portion of it is also flowing to the state and they're funding these grant programs. So um, yeah, I think it's important that we position, our, position ourselves, position the town to be able to take advantage of those while not sacrificing, you know, do we work on disposing of the center school or do we apply for a grant? Uh, we don't, we want to avoid having, you know, those situations as much as possible. So um, there's a focus on on land use and grants and community development in the job description, but I think there's also the reality that that depending on the time of year, we may need this position also to to, to chip in and on on the administrative end of it too. So that's that's the the long uh, just long explanation of what we're trying to do. So um, this was put into the uh, operating budget in the past town meeting, there's $55,000 in a community development line item that that we're looking to fund this position with. It would be a, I mean, we envision it as a 40 hour, a 40 hour per week position. It would provide benefits. And I, I had sent you today, after talking with Keith, I realized that we need to figure out a pay, uh, pay rate. And I had sent that email out earlier this afternoon as well. And we could, talk about that now or at at the at that time but it's that's the long that's a long explanation hmm. so our job today is basically to uh look over and suggest or approve the um, you know make suggestions and or approve the description that we've got which is in draft form right that's our main thing to do today right yeah and then the and then so it would be a recommendation to the select board that yeah. they accept whatever edited job description that comes out of this and then whatever the, you know, a suggestion on the pay rate. Did everybody have a chance to read over the job description? Does anybody have any questions or comments about that? 
I, yeah. I read it and I thought it was very comprehensive. I, I did too. And I, I just feel, you know, with a new position, it's a, um, it's a starting point, you know, as we go forward, we may find that we need to, to tweak it or modify it a little bit or expand or subtract something. But other than that, I think it's, um, it's a good starting point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, um, I read it and I thought it, um, it focused on the right things, like Brian was just saying, grants, land use, um, and those were really the things that we had in mind when we um, when we wanted to, to make this position. So I thought that was good. I sent <coughs> Brian some wordsmithing things on page three, but none of them were, uh, it, it was just like, how do we make sure this is a list of nouns and not uh, uh, so, uh, so I, and I don't, I'm not that, um, concerned about how those get, um, uh, re reworded. I don't want to change the meaning that's intended behind them. Um, but I, uh, I thought it, I mean, it got more comprehensive, like, are we going to have a 25 pound grant application? Well, maybe, <laughs> you know, but, uh, maybe, <laughs> So it's, so it's got, um, you know, it's got things other than just grants and land use in it. So I like that. Um, and I, and I like that it's got, um, you know, your expectation might be one to three nights a week, you're going to be at a public meeting and helping one board or another with something. I thought that was important to have that right up front. So a person who reads this description understands that while it's 40 hours a week, it's not necessarily nine to five every day. Necessary position that the town needs. Mm -hmm. Brian, what do you, was it your sort of thoughts or intent to let the person come in on board and, and sort of draft their own work schedule? other than obviously having to make meeting nights? Um, yeah, so it, it's, I think there's some flexibility in terms of how we're gonna, um, how we're gonna deal with, um, you know, the, the time in the office. Um, so that, that'll, that'll be a work, that'll, I think, we'll try to tailor that a little bit to, to whatever the, the person can do. Um, and I'm also cognizant that 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 this is a new position, and it's it's going to take some feeling out um, in terms of you know how this person fits in with the zoning board of appeals. It's going to be different than how they fit in with the planning board. It's going to be different, let's say, how they fit in with with the housing committee, um, because yeah. you know they're they're each of those boards are doing different roles and have different responsibilities. Um, and, and the, the, the ZBA may want, you know, not much help in the, the which might be my sense right now, uh, but the planning board will, would probably welcome the help because they do a lot more proactive planning, but they also have a, a, a permitting function. Um, and right now they're just overwhelmed essentially. Um, I mean, we're waiting on decisions that according to, I think Lynn had said, you know, months old decisions that have not been filed yet with the town clerk. So mm. it's, it's been a struggle and it's going to be good to have somebody that can, doesn't maybe, well, they, while, while they could write the decisions for them as well and, and have them sign off on it, but to, to kind of keep the, keep their finger on, keep their thumb on the, on the planning board to make sure we get these things. Cause they do, they do have legal significance and it is a liability to the town if we're not, if we're not I mean, doing this right. So it's also going to potentially be a challenge to make sure that the this new person, I, I don't want to use the word take advantage of, but if we'll use the planning board, for instance, as long as they're still doing what they need to do and they're not putting too much expectation and demand on the new person and expecting that new person to do the legwork that they really should be doing, or for that matter, any department. Yeah, I had the same thought. That and I, because this position reports to you, Brian, you know, the burden is really on you to make sure this person could be serving multiple masters if they, if the committees decide that 
this is their own personal slave. Yeah. Right. And I yeah. don't know if there's anything we can do other than know that you will make sure that that is not allowed to happen. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. That That's a good recommendation. Um, yeah, that's something I'll, I'll need to be aware of as as this, as we go through this, that um, yeah, there, there's, there needs to be limits on, 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 you know, that person's time for each individual board. Um, I, I think it would be difficult to say, okay, you point a board, you just get five hours or 10 hours per week. Cause it's going to depend on, it's going to depend on what's going on. Right. They yeah. could have a public hearing with, with, you know, three different, you know, three different site plan approvals. So they're going to need to put some more time there. And conversely, if there's a big grant application due, then they're going to be spending more time on that. So it is, it's going to be a, it's going to be a challenge to balance all of that. But. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, uh, just looking at the, that bullet point reads, provide staff assistance to the land use boards with respect to town planning and permit review slash approval manages the submission and review of land use applications attends meetings of the land use boards when necessary. So right now, who manages the submission and review of land use applications? Is that the board itself does that or? Um, it's it's kind of a mess, but oh, okay. <laughs> um, it, it depends on the actual submission, mm -hmm. the way our zoning bylaw is currently written. Site plan approval applications need to be submitted during a planning board meeting. Oh. Uh, special permit applications can be submitted to the town clerk. Um, and <coughs> oh, okay. then obviously, so each one of those has different notification requirements for advertising. And, and one of the things that's been getting missed, I guess, over the summer, spring and summer has been notice deadlines and making sure the, the links are right in the notice and, you know, just that communication piece um okay somebody just here's the process and just watch over it because yeah they're so each of those boards ha has um ha has a, a board secretary um and i mean she tries her best and i she tries her best and i think yeah. she got over she's overwhelmed right now so yeah um so so that person might be able to have some staff assistance on that, but it, it doesn't mean that this staff assistant will become the secretary of the board. Right, I don't foresee this. Yeah. I, I, immediately, I don't foresee this person becoming the sort of the, the minutes clerk of the, right. of the of the planning board or the zoning yeah. board. It seems like the, um, the, like the review of applications was like kind of the most specific thing and then the permit review approval and like, so it seems like the, the staff assistance is kind of defined there. So I agree with you that it, um, from the description, there isn't any requirement there that they you know, really come in and take over and get overly burdened with that. But do, do those seem to be the kinds of things that I think the planning board was asking for. You know, when they were asking for technical assistance, they, yeah, they, they needed technical assistance. And sometimes we can get that from the FERCOG and sometimes not. Right. So they were looking at it in terms of who, who can, you know, who can spend five hours and research, you know, see what other towns have done for this specific zoning topic. Yeah. Um, and, and the other issue is sort of a completeness review of an application. We don't really mm. know where that happens, except it doesn't really happen until the public hearing where it would just be nice to have a, another set of eyes that says, hey, this, you know, have a checklist and say, hey, you didn't give us the the site plan or something or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the traffic study. And, and then you just save time that way when it's, it, it just makes everything a lot smoother to have someone coordinate yeah. and watch over. Yeah, I don't, I can't see a, a, um, anything to change on the, what's written, I guess. I'm trying to focus on what's in the job description. I don't. I don't see anything that gives me a big red flag on the job description, at least regarding the interaction with the boards that would make me worry about that. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think the document says it well. It's what is a reading between the lines. We just have to keep an eye on it and let the boards know what this person is there for and isn't at their disposal for. Yeah. Okay, does anybody else have any more comments on the job description? Hey Joyce, I agree with those changes. So I'll, I'll, I'll make oh, those when, when I read oh, through it, when I read through it before the meeting that one of those, I paused for those two spots. I, was, <laughs> I think one of them is kind of like I was editing and it just kind of ended up hanging there. Yeah, um, yeah. Is that more like gra grammar? It's a more or? like a grammar thing, yeah. Yeah. There's a place where, where there's um, skills being listed, excellent writing skills, strong organizational skills, and then there's a phrase skilled in the utilization of computers. Yeah. And so we just have to make that into a into a, a noun or a something that kind of matches the structure of the others. Yeah. And then there was there was one place where a, just a, a sentence had too many commas in it, and I didn't know. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, and maybe like a, the word ability or skill needed to be inserted again in there. Um, and those are both in the last paragraph of the necessary knowledge and skills. I can put my screen up there if anybody is interested in the details, but um, I, I just think Brian is uh, uh, quite capable of fixing that. Um, so I'm not worried about it. Okay. Then do you want a motion for that, Brian, from us? Or do we want to just go on to discussing the pay rate first? Um, whatever way you want to do it, I think is fine. Yeah. All right. I'll make. I'll. I'll ask for a motion to approve the job description as presented. Um, yeah, and, would, and as amended by Joy. With, with yeah. The, as, yeah. With the grammatical uh, um, uh, amendments, I guess. Yeah. I would second that. Yeah. Okay. I have a motion. Is there any other discussion? If not. I'll we'll call for a roll call vote. Susan? Yes. Betty? Yes. Joyce? Yes. And myself? Yes. Okay. And now we'll move on to the pay scale or the suggested starting pay for this. Um, Brian, you had given us a, an, a starting range of around 23.75. Yep. Um, at this point in time, it Based on what your other data that you had, it looks in line with me to, to see, hopefully we can get somebody that we feel is qualified for that. And it's a starting point and yep. go from there. Yeah, so uh, I guess I didn't really know where to start after our conversation earlier today, but I went to the the, the FERCOG wage salary, salary report for Franklin County and then um, there wasn't much in terms of what I would consider comparable. But then I checked the America uh, American Planning Association website because a lot of municipalities will 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 advertise their planning positions there, and also the the MMA website, Mass Municipal Association. And um, most of them were out east, um, so it's not obviously the pay is different there. Uh, the two that were local, I, as I pointed out, were Irving, um, and that was a planning assistant, a 40-hour planning assistant position, and that's you know, really similar to what we're looking at here. Um, there might be more grant emphasis on grants here, but in addition to that. And then also, it was interesting to see that the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission was hiring. Um, they had said that they were hiring up to three new planners, um, and they gave up you know, the range of, they have pay ranges, you know, for an entry level 2104 to 2734 an hour. But the ad said that the typical salary for entry level there is 50,000. So yeah. it's geographically closer than, <laughs> and probably a little bit more similar in terms of pay scale than comparing to Watertown or, you know, yeah. wherever. Um, and then I also wanted to make sure that it that it made sense in the context of of 
sort of the, the other positions in the, the other administrative positions. Um, and I, I think it does at, at 2375. I think there's, there's going to be more responsibility and independence than the administrative assistant. Um, but it's probably comparable, I think, in terms of responsibilities as to the assistant treasure collector. Um, yeah. who, 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 who does some more advanced work, but it's still under the direction of, of mm -hmm. somebody else. So I think around there is probably, a, is probably appropriate. It's like we've all realized over the years, nothing's, we don't, there's never a perfect comparison in terms of, in terms of salaries and, and pay rates, but, um, it's within our budget and it seems to be relatively competitive for the for the area, so. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the Pioneer Valley planning position that's open is probably particularly relevant because uh, we presumably would be competing with them for some of the applicants. Mm, that's a good point. Well, it's certainly a, a starting point and we can see, you know, if we hire somebody at that and three months later they they leave because they you know they're not feeling they get enough or something like that we can always revisit it because we don't want to have constant turnover every yeah. six months either yeah now on, i know with um certain folks in town they're on a contract this would not be on a contract so it's not like when the person comes they could negotiate a higher salary or is there any place in the process where that might in that um, happen in the job description there was language that covered that oh i missed that part i believe it was near the end wasn't it brian i, I have to bring it back up yeah I'm, I'll, I'll bring it back up and look yeah. in terms of so it's a not it's an at-will employee it's a non non-contract employee oh, okay yeah so um, like we got somebody who we thought was really good um but they were balking at the pay rate is do we have any flexibility to act in the kind of the interview um and job offer process so the select was the hiring authority um and the personnel committee is making a recommendation to the select oh, board as okay. to as to what the pay rate's going to be, uh, in theory, the select board could decide that it wanted to um, change that, accept that yeah. recommendation or not accept that recommendation. Um, we would have to think about it in the context of the overall budget, of course, um, right. that we have for the okay. for the position. But that's really the only constraint, I think. Okay. All right. So if the select board approved, uh, agreed with whatever we recommend on the personnel committee. And then we found somebody we really, really wanted who needed 50 cents an hour more. Then that would go back to the select board and who, who might ask for the personnel committee's input might ask them to join the meeting or something, but um, right. that's all, that's a lot of, of ifs. It wouldn't be something where uh, like, I think with, with the police chief, with you, there might be another one or two people that have contracts that negotiate directly that. So it's not that process. Understood. Yeah. Uh, and I, I've heard, well, I had a meeting with the Williamsburg. Williamsburg has a new town administrator um, and I had a chance to meet with him a couple of weeks ago and, and he was a, a regional planning student from UMass. Mm. And he said it was, it's really difficult to find a job in planning right now, he said. Oh. And he, had, he has friends who are unemployed. So I figured we'll knock it down a couple dollars and see what we get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'm fine with the, with Brian's suggested starting point. Um, I, I, I mean, I want to be able to attract some good applicants. Um, and I think that's, that's important that whoever's in this job first do a good job um, and uh, uh, so that it so that it continues and so that the the whole thing is successful right and I, I'm very cognizant of next let's say April <laughs> March maybe 
when, when we're visiting with the finance committee and they're going to say, what do we get for our, what value did we get for our $55,000? So <laughs> I'm, I'm very cognizant of that conversation. Yeah. Now we can tell them we'll give you 5,000 back right away. We got them for 50K. <laughs> Plus interest. <laughs> Yeah. Well, does that need to be in the form of a motion? Or maybe other people have other comments to make. Does anybody else have any other comments about the proposed salary? If not, someone want to make a motion. All right. I uh, move the, we start with a 40 hours per week, $23 and 76 cents. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm looking for uh, it now. I meant 75. 75 cents. <laughs> Six. Let me let me ask this question, Brian. Do you anticipate this would not ever have an opportunity of having overtime? Um, if, it, if it does, I'm just gonna suggest we go to an even number, 74 or 76. You like those, right? <laughs> uh, I I know that between myself and Janet, we, we hate odd numbers with payroll. Uh, um, it's probably, it's probably non-exempt. Well, I'd have, I'd have to look. Um, we can make it 2376 just in case. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I, I moved that we have the starting rate of $23 and 76 cents per hour. For this I have a business. second? Second. Any other discussion? If not, I'll do a roll call vote. Susan? Yes. Betty? Yes. Joyce? Yes. And myself? Yes. So unanimous. Um, the next item was, is there anything else not anticipated within the, next, within the previous 48 hours? Do you have anything else, Brian? Well, I just want to add that one of the things that, that I hope this will do is it will it will free up some of my time. Um, and one of the things that that's always been on the back burner for for this committee has been the personnel policy update. Um, and I, I just I really want to get to that um, because I it's it's important and it's one of those things that. it's you need it to be good when you need it essentially um yeah and, and by that i mean we could we could probably get by many years without an issue and then something comes up and the process isn't right or or something's outdated and that's when you realize that oops we probably should have done this sooner so i prefer not to get to that point um if we can help it so yep definitely Anybody else have anything they want to bring forth? Okay, then I'll ask for a motion to adjourn or I'll do a roll call vote. Um, I move to adjourn. Okay, Susan? Yes. Betty? Yes. Joyce? Aye. And Keith. I want to put in Keith and Susan, you did a wonderful job on Friday. Okay, thank you. It was thank a great you. turnout. Yeah, it was. It was yeah. a lot of fun. Oh, I'm really sorry I couldn't be there. You missed a nice showing. Yeah. It was, um, FCAT was there, so hopefully when Ooh. we get a chance, we'll see see that on FCAT. Yeah, he thought he'd have it this week. Oh, excellent. Yeah, he's good at that, so it should be on. But it was, I, I got worried at 6 o'clock because nobody was there. And then everybody started coming, so it was very nice. It was scheduled for 6 30. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I like to be there a little early. And I think, you know, besides the mosquitoes, there was a lot of kids and it, it made it really nice. Yeah, we just had no idea what to expect in terms of turnout. So we had told 5J 200, which we pulled out of thin air. And at the end, we had nine left that we were walking around giving away. But that's how, you know, how lucky we got. Well, you um, know what? I thought it was excellent for the ice cream to be in cups instead of serving. Yeah, yeah. And that was the board. The Board of Health made us do that. And well, like, that was excellent. 
We were delighted. We owe them a thank you because it made yeah. it so efficient it to just keep putting the cups out on the table. And nobody had to wait. Huh. All right. So this meeting gets a special extra end piece after it's done where people can, uh, people can find out more about the ice cream social. <laughs> <laughs> We'll All put right. a link to it at the end, right? <laughs> That's yeah, there we go. Link to it. it be... Link to the video. <laughs> okay. Well, good night, everybody. Good night.